I found a ship that fits the doctor's description. We'll work on finding the other generators while you take out this one. And with that, welcome to Mother Gunship. So, Mother Gunship is the next game by Terrible Posture Games, the guys that brought you Tower of Guns. And you're going to uh, notice in more than one way that this is not just their next game, but is really more of a spiritual successor, really, to Tower of Guns. It reminds me a lot of that game, and uh, that's obviously very much deliberate because, like I said, it's really a spiritual successor in a lot of ways. Tower of Guns is a game that is, was uh, really all about the exploration and the gun sort of, uh, I suppose, the gun creation. You were supposed to, you know, go in there with a gun and craft it into something better by picking up various modifiers to it, things like that. Well, this game has taken that to a sort of ridiculous level, as you can see, because uh, Mother Gunship is all about the quite literal gun crafting. It has a very modular, very interesting oops, gun creation system. And uh, you basically go into these levels under the w with the understanding that you are to find and buy various gun parts and actually put them together into a loadout that will help you not die so easily. And then use said loadout to get stronger and stronger and eventually create a ludicrous combination of, of parts uh, that will become your, you know, arsenal of weapons and uh, hopefully, well, not die. And uh, the actual goal is to simply get to the end of the level and what actually awaits you uh, in each room will, you know, be anything from just enormous turrets to large floating shooty things to, you know, laser turrets and uh, drones and all sorts of stuff. Very much reminiscent of what Tower of Guns actually offered you. And uh, really the highlight of the game for me has absolutely, of course, been the gun crafting, but as I said before, this is definitely a spiritual successor in its whole idea to, to Tower of Guns. So also the enemy variety and overall sort of enemy idea is quite interesting as well. Because you're seeing these like ludicrously large turrets firing huge shells at you, and of course, yes, the shells can be shot out of the air oftentimes, and some other pretty cool things as well. And the rooms themselves can often be intimidatingly large, and really the whole scale of everything in general is quite large and pretty fun to navigate, because Another thing that this game definitely takes from Tower of Guns is its jump system. You can jump many, many times. In fact, right now I can actually quad jump. And from the very beginning of the game, you can actually jump three times by default. You have a triple jump, which is kind of ludicrous. And uh, even now, the quad jump is actually nothing because I've been able to jump 22 times before. Uh, a 22 jump, I'm not even sure what kind of word you would use for that, is actually the top that I've reached. So many jumps that the jump indicator up there in the top right actually wrapped around itself twice. But it does go higher than that if you want. And uh, yeah, so basically if you can't tell already, the overall systems of this game, the mechanics in general, kind of go for the just excess in kind of idea. The in general, let's make everything as ridiculous as possible. And I would say this is where the game actually surpasses Tower of Guns, not just in how much excess there is and how much kind of ridiculousness it can fit into itself, but also in its general aesthetic and its personality. Tower of Guns had a really quite nice aesthetic. It had that, um, I'm not going to say cell shaded it wasn't really cell shaded it just had that kind of almost Borderlands-esque idea of semi-realistic uh, textures and things like that underneath a very stylized uh, filter, and it looked quite nice. But I think the uh, very, very colorful and quite nice looking aesthetic of this game actually does it a lot of favors, and it looks really nice. Um, everything's, you know, very colorful. The explosions and effects look quite nice. All of the energy shots and things like that going around everywhere. It doesn't get so ridiculously difficult to see at any point that it's frustrating. Uh, it's never visual overload so far, even in the harder rooms. Of course, I haven't gotten really, really far into the game yet with, you know, large numbers of enemies and effects going everywhere. But so far, at least, in my experience, it has simply looked very good. Uh, but there have also been... A lot of points where I've noticed that some of the rooms are quite visually striking and a lot of the enemies look really, really cool. 
like those uh, floating jellyfish bot things right there are actually healers, and uh, you immediately, because of their sort of green auras and interesting silhouettes and things, know when they're in the room, and that's important, of course, for taking them down and knowing that a threat like that has appeared. So things like that, in my opinion, do make this art style very nice. Not only very nice looking, but also very functionally nice. So I do approve of that. And of course, your weapons and how they operate. In regards to all of that, they have a very impressive set of animations and unique functions as well, not just in their literal appearance, like, you know, the particle effects and things that go off when they fire, which are always very nice and very satisfying and add to the satisfaction of the combat, but also the fact that each weapon tends to have a, an actual animation when you see them fire, like, you know, how the railgun twists and how the blasters actually recoil with each shot. And another little indication that this is definitely a bit of a spiritual successor here to Tower of Guns, I found this little easter egg here. The Hugbots from Tower of Guns are back, which I thought was kind of adorable and I felt I had to show this because I just found it, you know, interesting. I'm sure the developer's wife is happy once again to have their inclusion in the game a reality. But yeah, that's uh, just, I think, enough about Tower of Guns because, you know, this is not that game, but I just felt that I had to show that. So, in regards to Mother Gunship, what else are we actually seeing here that makes it unique? Well, this actual sort of gun crafting system really shows the creativity in the game. So, what you're seeing right now is on my left, the sort of main armament that I've decided to make for myself in this particular mission, which is a dual blaster with a, a proc chance based, uh, what's called a cap? in the middle, and uh, that shows just that I like to, you know, make a sort of reliable, easy to use weapon, oftentimes on my left mouse button, something that I can fire and do a lot of damage with at various ranges, and I don't have to be too specific with, because I feel that that makes sense to have a kind of reliable multi-range weapon. And then on my right, I've got a railgun, because the last mission that I did unlocked railguns for me. At, uh, and, I mean, come on, when you're given a railgun, how can I not try it out? So yeah, I'm trying out the railgun. And it turns out the railgun acts very much like I thought it would, basically an instant hit weapon that does a ton of damage and has a very low fire rate. So that's good. And uh, essentially the way that the system works is you're given various types of attachment pieces that don't necessarily do anything on their own, but that have various points on them to where you can attach other things. And from these other points you can attach other pieces, as well as Barrels, which are the actual guns themselves, more or less. The barrels have to face forwards to work because, of course, you don't want to shoot yourself on accident. And you can also attach caps, which, as I mentioned, are those things that will uh, basically add proc chances and otherwise just uh, modify the way that the entire gun will work. They're like passive boosts. And so the general idea, of course, is to attach all of these things in the most ludicrous order possible to make the most broke, overpowered weapon you possibly can, while still maintaining that it can actually fire at least one time without drawing so much energy that it fails to work properly. And uh, yeah, that's basically how the system works. You are trying to go through the mission and get as many parts as you can so that you can make yourself very, very strong within the mission. You will have noticed in the very beginning you can actually take a limited number of parts with you before you actually start the mission. And uh, different missions have a different number of parts that you can actually take. Uh, some missions you can only take a few, some missions you can take like, you know, five or six. And you don't actually have to fill out that uh, number of parts to take with you, but it's of course depending on the threat level of the mission, which depends on how high a level the enemies will be in it, it's pertinent to take a good number of them with you so that you can, you know, survive. And, uh, like, these little guys right here are really annoying. They're one-way screens that block your shots, and you have to hit the non-screen parts of them in order to do damage to them, but they do have quite a lot of health. And, uh, really annoying enemies. Very, very good enemy design. I like them. And, um, so you can also, as you saw, find shops in the missions and these coins. And the coins are interestingly dual-purpose, but we'll get onto that in just a minute. The coins can be used in the shops to buy more gun parts that allow you to further customize your weapons in said mission and then, you know, get stronger throughout the mission and survive. So obviously I'm kind of going with a fairly basic arsenal in this mission, just a dual fire mine blaster and the singular unmodified uh, railgun in order to actually get through it. 
as well as a couple of uh, extra jumps that I found. So nothing too fancy, but it's done the job in this not too high level mission that I managed to get through. And uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. So that was an example of, well, there's an example of a secret. That's why I keep like humping the walls. There are classic FPS style secrets. And uh, yeah, so that is kind of a mission that wasn't too bad to get through, but was maybe could have been handled better if I would have uh, taken the time to modify my various weapons a little bit. Now, when you complete a mission, you actually get to keep all of the gun parts that you found and bought throughout the mission, so that whenever you want to take things with you next time on a mission, those are more things that you can actually select from next time and bring with you. The difference is, of course, if you die on a mission, all of the things that you took with you from the selection that you've gathered so far and the things that you bought in said mission are lost, so you lose them. Good luck with that. Now, this is what I mentioned with the personality. You may have noticed that the NPCs in this game actually do have a, a fair amount of personality, which is, I think, another advantage that this game has over its predecessors. Predecessor. Uh, there's the, the dialogue and the characters I actually do quite like. I think that it does have a good amount of personality. It, I suppose you could say it, it may be going for the kind of Borderlands-esque personality, but I think it does it really well. I don't think it's cringy or, or anything like that. I think it actually does this style in a way that doesn't shove itself in your face too much, and it lasts just the right amount of time to not be obnoxious. I like the characters. You know, you've got your your colonel there that's really just kind of go get him a little too much and is clearly incompetent and really dangerous. And you've got your uh, you've got Wilkinson that's actually the one competent person that knows what's going on and still has her own problems. And it, it's a really good like selection of people. I really like the characters actually and their uh, their input quote-unquote, is actually quite valued. This is the hub area. You've got uh, an experience system, as you saw there, and every time you level up, you get a passive point that you can put into your character to increase various statistics, like the number of jumps you start with and the amount of maximum health you have. You saw there, that was actually a black market. Um, that's another thing that I was mentioning earlier. Those coins there actually aren't just for in the missions. Every time you complete a mission, those coins will actually come with you back here, and you can spend them at the black market. Now, the interesting thing about the black market is, uh, those coins uh, can actually buy you things that you normally wouldn't have access to yet, as well as things of very high rarities. So the weapon parts do actually have a rarity system, and they can get additional stats and things of that sort. You notice there that um, there are a couple of other game modes now, things like an endless mode and a nightmare mode. You notice the nightmare mode had really good rewards, but you could only take one thing with you and it had a very enhanced difficulty. And now this is a separate kind of mission here that I wanted to show you that involves, uh, instead of taking your own gun parts with you, they actually give you several gun parts to take and expect you to use them. Now you don't technically have to use them, but uh, you will be punching things from the start if you don't. And the very first time I did one of these, I actually deliberately exclusively used only a gun made of the parts they gave me, just as a challenge to myself. You don't get anything for doing this, it was just something that I wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, I cleared the mission exclusively by using only something that I could make from what they gave me. It was just kind of a fun challenge. So right now I've got one of these really cool uh, triangular like, gun connection pieces that I quite like, because they're pretty versatile, and some heavy rockets. And uh, there's some other things that I could attach with, but nothing to attach to yet, so I'll have to wait until I get some coins in a shop to buy things. Now, these uh, heavy rockets are really powerful, but as you can see, the rocket is very, very slow. So, you do need a bit of time to actually attach some things. And there's lots of other stuff that you can attach as well. Now, you can make some absolutely ridiculous guns with this system, uh, which I haven't really showed you yet, because in missions I haven't really had enough stuff to build, like a really heavily layered weapon yet but there also is a lab in your hub area to just mess with as much stuff as you want without consequence to see what you can make if you wish now i've never seen this rolling lava weapon before so obviously i had to buy it and try it out because of course first off i want to try it and see what it does and secondly if i actually beat the mission that means i get to keep it so duh i wanted to see what it did i decided to make a sort of vertical stack of things see what I could do. 
Now, whenever you make a weapon, you do have a uh, an energy draw that the weapon actually has. Now, I haven't upgraded the amount of energy that I regenerate or the amount of energy that I actually... Uh, <laughs> and that's what it does. Pretty great. I haven't upgraded the amount of energy that I actually have maximum yet. So, I should probably get on that. But it turns out this thing is actually really awesome and these go together fairly well. It's almost like a uh, lava field grenade launcher, so I decided to go with it and just max this thing out and make it as silly as possible with what I have. So let's do that. This is now a rapid fire energy streaming lava grenade launcher deal, my bob thing. And this is what it does. It does drain energy at an obscene rate and you can only fire it for like three seconds, but anything in front of you in that three seconds is probably going to explode, so I don't see the problem. Now, this weapon system is seriously fun. It is really, really great. And I would be remiss to say that it is definitely, you know, it's obviously the highlight of the game. The actual level design is actually quite enjoyable, and the enemy designs are really good. But, I mean, come on. This weapon system is clearly where the focus of the game is, and it is a ton of fun to mess with. It's any kind of game that lets you deliberately make yourself overpowered. You know, anything that lets you piece by piece make yourself silly in any way possible is great. It is fantastic to do. And I see this thing called the Barrel Barrel, and I think, oh, that looks huge and stupid. I should probably strap it to my rocket launcher. So I did. And that's what it looks like. And I was happy with that. So I take this little arsenal out with me, and I decide, yeah, that's probably a good enough set of weapons to go and beat this level. And uh, it's just feelings like that that make this game a ton of fun. And uh, that's without, like, you know, ridiculous stacks of weapons. Now, <laughs> what else does this game have to offer? Well, as you saw, it's got some other modes, like the Endless mode and the Nightmare mode, as well as other types of missions available to you. Excitingly enough, in August, this game is also going to get a free update that's going to add online multiplayer. So that is going to be an absolute ton of fun, and I really look forward to trying that out because, I mean, come on, online multiplayer with a weapon system like this is probably going to be a hugely fun idea. And uh, I, yeah, I mean, come on, that's, I really look forward to trying that out. And that actually got me thinking because in one level, I had a, uh, like a five bladed flamethrower um, I was just, you know, I was walking around, and I happened to have a bunch of saw blades that I had sort of jerry-rigged onto this uh, attachment with these L-shaped attachers, and then I got a flamethrower and attached it in the middle, so I had this, like, flamethrower that roasted anything in front of me, and then when things got really, really close and got through the flamethrower, they hit a wall of, like, these five saw blades. And I started thinking, man, I'm a dude in this big power armor with a five saw-bladed flamethrower on my right arm. This is getting all a bit uh, Warhammer 40,000, isn't it? So then I got thinking, wouldn't it be really fun with this... Because they said they want to also add more game modes and some other gun parts and stuff like that eventually in the future with more updates. With this... Uh, other things like this uh, online multiplayer coming. Wouldn't it be fun if there was a game mode that's kind of like Space Hulk? Only not, you know, copyright infringingly close to Space Hulk because, you know... Let's be honest, uh, Games Workshop is a little protective of their IP, cough, where you are in a kind of derelict-ish version of one of these spaceships. It's very dark instead of bright like these, and maybe the uh, electricity is off in most rooms except for some where you are led to, and, uh, you know, the rooms where the electricity is on are kind of what leads you around the ship. You're looking for the bright lights, and uh, in those rooms is where you can find some crafting benches. And instead of uh, buying stuff, you are trying to find equipment. You're finding these parts laying around to scavenge with friends. And rather than robots, maybe you're trying to fight off some, say, more biological-looking enemies. Not gene stealers, cough. And, uh, yeah, you're uh, going around a more derelict version of one of these ships, trying to scavenge parts from whatever you can find and attach them all together in the creepy dark version of the ship. I think that would be a really, really fun game mode, and I would play the crap out of that. Uh, not Space Hulk, we'll call it. No, I don't know what you would call it, but I think it would be a really interesting version of the game mode, actually, to have a, uh, a sort of derelict scavenger mode. 
I just kind of thought of that after going around with my giant overpowered flamethrower saw blade thing for a while, that it was a bit Warhammer 40,000 and something like that would be kind of cool. But anyway, this has been a look at Mother Gunship. I think it is a very, very interesting game, and its weapon system and overall exploration and things are a really, really cool addition to the genre, and I'm definitely going to be playing and covering more of it because, I mean, look at it. If you want to take a look at it, go and look in the description below for a look at the Steam page. It will be available at the time of recording tomorrow, the uh, 17th, but by the time that YouTube gets done processing this, it may actually be today. Either way, it will be available for the low, low price, in my opinion, for the amount of content here on offer and the promise of other updates, of $25, which I think is pretty reasonable for what you're getting. Thank you very, very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.